the Subnautica 2.0 Living Large update fixes multiple, maybe hundreds of bugs. It also includes some new features such as the unstuck button, cloud saves, and some buildings from below zero like the large room and the large glass room. While these new additions to the game are amazing, some players are not yet ready to move to the new version, especially players like me who have certain mods that aren't yet compatible with the new update. So chances are Subnautica automatically updated and if that's the case you will need to roll back to the previous version. Simply follow the instructions in the patch notes. Go to your Steam game library and right click on Subnautica. Click Properties and then click the Betas tab. In the first drop down you need to select the Legacy, Public Legacy Builds option. And that's it. Steam should now download the old version of the game. Once you have the old version installed, it's time to install the mods. Now, keep in mind that I play on PC and this tutorial is for the PC. I do not know how to install mods on Mac, Linux, console, etc. So these Subnautica mods can be installed manually or they can be installed with a mod manager like Vortex. But with Subnautica, I recommend that you do it manually. Of course, it's just personal preference, but I've had some issues using Vortex with Subnautica in the past. I use Vortex for games like Skyrim, which I download hundreds of mods for. With that out of the way, I will show you where I like to get my mods. I like to go to the Nexus Mods site, which keep in mind you will need an account for if you want to download anything. Once you're logged in, go to the Subnautica page and look for mods that you want, but make sure that you download the legacy version of them. You're going to want to avoid all of the stuff that says Bepinex. Bepinex is the new mod manager for the new version of the game, you know, Subnautica 2.0. We're looking for stuff that requires QMod Manager, which is made for the old version of the game, the legacy version of the game. Hopefully the mod description comes with pretty good documentation and you can figure out if there is a legacy version and a new version. The last thing you want is to download something that's incompatible with your game. So definitely just take the time, read the documentation, see what you can figure out from the description. So if you're modding Legacy Subnautica, one of the first mods you're going to want to grab is called QMod Manager. This is the tool that was used to manage lots of mods for Subnautica, and Subnautica 2.0 is not compatible with it. You'll notice that a lot of Legacy mods will require this tool. So go ahead and click that manual download link and download the mod. Once the file's done downloading, you'll notice that you'll need to unzip it as it is a zip file. So you'll need a tool like 7-zip or WinRAR to actually view the compressed files. To install QMod Manager, you simply need to put these three files in your Subnautica game directory. To easily find your Subnautica game directory, you can go back to your Steam game library, right click on Subnautica, go to manage, and then browse for local files. So simply drag and drop or extract the files to the Subnautica game directory, and boom, you've just installed QMod Manager. Start up Subnautica, and then you will notice that there is a new folder in this game directory called QMods. Most other mods that you install are going to go into this QMods folder. Because like I said, most other legacy Subnautica mods will require this QMod Manager tool. So there you have it. Just download and put your mods in this folder and you are good to go. That is how you download and install mods for older versions of Subnautica. If you are looking to install mods for the latest version, check the link in the description. Integrate the new PDA data.